Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to code our self-driving car for our initial testing and we will see how we can run the motors forwards and backwards. So let's get started. So we are here at the Arduino environment and the first thing we can see that we have our void setup and our void loop. So we will remove the comments first. We don't need that. And I have zoomed in a little bit. I hope that's not too much. Uh, I think this is fine. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we have to write down our pin numbers that we have connected our motor module to. So normally what you can do is you can write, for example, you have enable pin, you have uh, input one, input two for the direction. So normally you can write it like this. So you can write in uh, integer, then you can write, for example, enable A is equals to, for example, pin number 13. Now, this is uh, fine, but the thing is that because we have 12 of these, 12 pins that we have connected, it will take up a lot of space. So in order to avoid that, what we can do is we can write it down as an array. So we can write, for example, integer motor pins on the left. Uh, we will separate them in left and right because um, we, we just want we just don't want to overcomplicate things. So here we will have six pins for the left. So three for one motor and three for another, and we will give it a value and these values will be your pin numbers so for this instance we have pin number 13 12 11 10 9 and 8 if you connect them in sequence is it's easier to actually remember what you did so then you can write motor pins right and then we can write again six pins and then we will write that our pin numbers oh, our pin numbers are basically uh, seven six five four three and two so that is about this so instead of now having 12 different lines we just have now two lines and instead of worrying about all these different variables with different names we can just uh, point to our array and then we can um, ask for a specific element whenever we need it so in the void setup, we are going to write the input and the outputs. So in this case, we have all of these pins as our outputs. So what we can do is we can simply write it down one by one in a line again, like, um, for example, pin mode. So we can write, for example, enable A is output, right? So this is what we can do. Uh, again, this will take uh, a lot of space in terms of the lines. So what we want to do is we want to add a loop that will loop through these two arrays and it will assign all of them as outputs. So instead of doing this, we can write here that for actually this should be. OK, we'll do it later. So this should be for int i is equals to zero. And then we will say that i is less than 6. Uh, this 6 is not included. It's exclusive. So, and then we are going to write i++. plus plus. So, that will be our loop. And then we will end our loop here. And in between, we are going to write that motor pins left at... Uh, my phone is going crazy. Anyways, so motor pins left is um, the we need the ith element and we want to set it as output. And then again, we will do it for the right. So what will uh, happen is that it will loop through each of these arrays and it will declare all of them as outputs. So that should do. And we can also add, actually, let's do the formatting. It's a little annoying. Okay, uh, so one more thing you can add is the serial begin so that if we have to monitor any value, we can print it out. So we can write serial begin 9600 
and that should be it okay so we are done with the what do you call the setup so if, if you are new to Arduino we have three main areas or sections so the first one is definition uh, of our um, constants and variables and then uh, even the libraries everything it's uh, up top over here and then we have our void setup and then we have our void loop void setup will run only once and void loop will run again and again so this is uh, section one this is section two and now we are going on to the section number three so let's write that down so in section number three let me create some space we we are going to send the command to our motors now how we can send we can um, access our input pins and our enable pins now input pins are for direction and uh, we have the enable pin for our speed so here we will write that uh, the input pins are digital because they will be only on and off one or zero so we will write them as digital so we will write here digital write and we will write that motor pins left at element number one because the zero element pin number 13 is basically enable uh, this is how I have put it it's up to you uh, as you connect it but for now I have connected it uh, to this so we will write it here as one and then we will say that it is one okay and then we will go here and we will write digital write actually let me just copy it why type it again okay motor pin left and we are going to say that pin number two is zero so one of them has to be one and the other one has to be zero for the other direction it will be zero and then it will be one and then we can write analog write analog write now this is our enable pin for the speed so we will write motor pins left at number zero and then we are going to write that let's say we have 25 percent of the speed um actually it's not 25 because uh, we have up till 127 so the values that we are sending here are eight bits so now that we have written the code for our first motor let's let's test it out before we go to the next ones so to upload the code you have to go to tools you have to select arduino mega if you are using mega and then you have to choose uh, the com port which is four in my case just make sure that you are getting a tick in front of this that means it's connected so now we can simply upload uh, let me just save this as let's say mo let's say initial tests So if I turn this on now, you will see that the motor actually starts moving. And this motor is the left top uh, motor, or we can say the left front motor. So now we can write this here that this is the left front motor. And then we will go on to the next one, which will be our left back so left back and again it will be pretty much the same in this case i have put the enable pin at the end which is eight so we will write it uh, as zero one two three four five so this will be the fifth element so over here we will write five and then this will be three and this will be four so if we run that now let's see what happens so if we turn this on now you can see both of the motors are moving but the problem is they are not moving in the same direction so this is going forward and you can see this one is going backwards so we have to flip that so here we can write that this is zero and this is one so let's try that again 
So now we can see that both the motors are moving forward. So now we can replicate this to our right side. So we can copy this and we can paste it here. So we can say this is right and this is right. And instead of the left, we just have to copy this and we will paste it over here. So we can paste and uh, the, the elements are the same. We don't have to change any values here or over here. And hopefully this will be the same as well. If it's not, we can again reverse it. So at this point, all of our motors should move forward. So let's run this and see what happens. And there we have it. So all of the motors now are moving in the forward direction. So you can see all the motors are moving in the forward direction. So we can do again reverse as well, but uh, we will have to copy and paste the whole code. So if we wanted to do reverse, all we have to do is uh, change the 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. So that is how we can do it. But I want to keep this as forward because this is the first test you should do if you are building any kind of robot that you should move it forward first and then see if all of the motors are moving properly and if it's going straight and how much is it tilting and stuff like this. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. In the next part, we are going to write proper function to actually run our motor because right now it is just based on these, um, how many lines are these? This is six, 12 lines. So we, we don't want to write every, uh, 12 lines every time we have to go back and forth and change direction. So we will write a function so that we can send in a value and it will do all the mathematics calculation for us and it will send the values to the motors and turn and move forward and whatnot. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next one.